Nerdish Little Dragons, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am going to be doing the books and makeup tag which I found from the channel Books with Chloe. And obviously this totally fits what my channel is doing. So very excited. Should be fun. The way this works is as I put on my makeup, each um, each product has a question associated with a book that I have to answer. Should be cool. And I have no idea what my makeup's gonna look like today, so. All right, so I'm gonna start with primer. I'm using the Becca Skin Love Bright and Oh wait, I need to moisturize. That is not, that that's not part of it. I just, I just need to moisturize and I need sunscreen because, oh gosh. Because it's summer and I am fair. Because it's summer and I am very, very pale. I feel like I should answer a question for moisturizer since I added it. So this will be a bonus question that I come up with on the spot. So, moisturizer. What is a book that refreshes you? I'm gonna say Prisoner of Azkaban. I mean, that and Goblet of Fire are my two favorite Harry Potter books. So obviously, if you guys have watched both of my videos on Prisoner of Azkaban and Goblet of Fire, you know that those are my two absolute favorite Harry Potter books. And I just feel refreshed when I read Prisoner of Azkaban because it's just such a fun little story. It's got all of the whimsy of the early Harry Potter books. It has my favorite characters like Remus and Neville. It's just, it's just a good, it's just a good story. So I know technically speaking like J.K. Rowling's canceled, but I still love the books. So like, I just like, there's, there's a lot happening. Probably should have chosen another book, but I just came up with that question on the spot, so I didn't have time to think about it. So, all right, primer. Pick a book that left a lasting impression on you. So I'm going to be using the Becca Skin Love Brighten and Blur Primer, and a book that left a lasting impression on me. I'm actually, it's a play. I have a couple plays in here, but it counts because I read them. A book that left a lasting impression on me is A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. And that play is just so so powerful. If you haven't read it, I would highly, highly recommend it. I read it for a script analysis class. Basically, if you if you haven't heard of it, it documents the experiences of an African American family that lives in Chicago and focuses on all of the characters trying to find their identity. So there's and it goes through a lot of really hard stuff and they're trying to buy this house that's in a white community and the I can't remember his name this this white guy's basically like we'll pay you not to move into our neighborhood and it's just I'm doing a really bad job of explaining it but it was so impactful on me and it's something I still think about part of what made it so impactful is you know of course being in an analysis class I had to really think about it and I used it for one of my projects and I created a painting based on it it's one of those books that just really really made me think and helped me really think about race and racial identity and you know generational trauma I mean it's just it's a really 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 good play I really hope someday I can see it performed uh, rather than just reading but even reading it's amazing so next is foundation so I guess I am doing foundation before I do anything else so my eye look will have to be not crazy today foundation is favorite first book in a series I'm using the Born This Way foundation from Too Faced and it is in the shade Swan. Favorite first book in a series, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. So that's another one of those series that just had such a huge impact on me. Like as, as a kid, as an adult, I grew up reading Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It was just so impactful on me. I still love it all these years later. It's just, it's just a really, really, really good book. And it was a perfect way to start off the series. Obviously without, without that, you wouldn't have the rest of the series. And I would say my favorite is actually Horse and His Boy, which is one of the middle books. And I feel like it's one of the most underappreciated books, which I can't talk about because that doesn't answer the question. But Without Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, we never would have had that. And I enjoy it because I love Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, if that makes any sense. Because Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe kind of sets everything up. It gives you the sense of the world and the majesty and the whimsy and the magic and everything. It is just really good. <laughs> you know? It's just really good. So it's my favorite first book in a series. And I will probably always love it. And I will force my children to read them. It's on my forever reading list. Where is my concealer? Here, we'll use, we'll use this. I'm not going to do my under eyes yet because I usually wait to do that until after mascara so if I mess up with mascara I can, you know, conceal it. So I will do my blemish concealer. I'm using Colourpop No Filter Concealer and this is in Fair 04. Cover up all the mistakes. Okay, so the question for this one is what is a character you wish didn't exist? And I had a hard time thinking of this one. The first thing that came to mind 
and what I'm ending up going up with is Dolores Umbridge which see because she serves such an important part of the story and she's such a good villain I don't it's not that I wish she didn't exist but I hate her so much that she was the only person the only character I could think of and I was having trouble thinking of characters that were just like useless and I wish they didn't exist so yeah Dolores Umbridge that, that's that's what I got I just I hate her so much I've been trying to read through Order of the Phoenix for literally like two months and I just get mad every time I think about Dolores Umbridge and don't want to pick up the book because I hate her so much I just like she ticks every hate box for me because she just she's a terrible person you know she's she's prejudiced she's like abusive to children she thinks she's in the right she's self-righteous and a hypocrite and just everything I despise wrapped up into one character and like I like I don't get mad easily she is like one of the very 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 few characters that I just hate like I, I legitimately like feel a deep sense of loathing about her character which makes her an effective villain I still hate her though Okay, so we're gonna do browse. Pick a book that you think everyone should read. Right, so I'm going to be using my go-to combo, which is the ABH Brow Wiz. This is in the shade Soft Brown. And then the AB ABH Dip Brow Gel. This is also Soft Brown. So my book that I think everyone should read, and I had, like, I had so much trouble with this one because there's so many books I think everyone should read. Like, so many books. But I ended up deciding on I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou because that was another one. I just actually, I read the whole thing for the very first time last year and I'd seen like bits and pieces of it before but never like sat down and read the entire thing. And again, she's just one of those writers that is so engaging and so poetic and impactful and there's just this elegance and power to her writing that I think everyone should experience. It's just incredible. Incredible. And of course, you know, you also have, and of course, you know, she documents her life experience and you get to see everything that she went through in her early life. And it's just such a powerful, powerful memoir, but in a way that's engaging. And I think that everyone can read and get value out of. And it's just, it's just so beautiful and eloquent. I honestly think she is one of just the best writers ever, period. And the fact that she was like basically mute in her younger years, just like she went from not being able to speak and use her voice to using her voice to literally inspire millions of people. And that to me is just incredible. I just, I love Maya Angelou so, so much. She's such an inspiration. So I had some trouble deciding what I wanted to do for my eye, eye look today, but I think I'm going to do something simple so I don't do my eye look for too long beyond what I'm talking about the book. So I'm going to use my Dream Street palette from Kathleen Lights and Colourpop. It's my go-to everyday palette because the colors just work really well for me. So yeah, I'm going to do that. The question is, pick a book with your favorite colors on the cover. So I, ch I have, my favorite color is blue and the exact hue kind of depends from day to day. So I ended up choosing Pachinko by Min Jin Lee and it's a beautiful book and a beautiful story. I think the author's writing is just gorgeous and it's very descriptive and colorful. So I kind of, I kind of tried to take it a step further, like not just. Anyway, so yeah, it just has this, it has this gorgeous cover, which was honestly part of the reason why I bought it. I forgot to put on an eye primer. Oh well. Um, but it's part of the reason why I bought it in the, like in the first place. And I was just so like attracted to the cover I thought it was just gorgeous and I hadn't read a lot of books that took place in Asia in a long time so the book basically starts in Korea and this is before there was it really takes it takes place before there's a North and South Korea it's just Korea and then the rest of the book kind of takes place in Japan so it's just it's a beautiful beautiful story and it's one of those intergenerational stories that tracks one family through I think I think it tracks it through three generations? Four generations. No, it tracks it through four generations, which again, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, well-written story. And it took me, it took me a hot second to get into, but then once I did, I was just like consuming it. Like I, I think I stayed up to like 5 a.m. to finish it. And it's a, it's a hefty book because it covers four generations, but you know. Not feeling super makeup inspired today. So we're just gonna throw some shimmer on the lid and hope that does it. It's one of those books that I want to do a book look on eventually. I haven't done it yet. I read it 
well, it was like end of 2018, beginning of 2019 that I read it for the first time and so I'd have to reread it or at least re-skim through it in order to do an accurate book look on it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, so. Eyeliner. Pick a dark and mysterious book. Where is my eyeliner? Oh, I think it's in, I think it's in here. I'm very well prepared for this video, as you can see. All right, I'm using the TARDIS Double Take Eyeliner. So I picked The Steep and Thorny Way by Kat Winters. This one is another one that I have recently done a book look on and read for the first time and it just had me on the absolute edge of my seat. It's a retelling of Hamlet, super up my alley. It just had a very kind of dark ethereal atmosphere to it as well as just being, you know, deep and mysterious and all that fun stuff. It was just, it, it's a very atmospheric read. Super highly recommend. It's just, it's very, very good. And I'm going to shut up and do my honor. Give me a sec. Okay. We're, we're gonna call it done before I completely ruin it. That, <laughs> ah. Next. Oh, mascara. Pick a long book. For mascara, I am going to be using the Flower Beauty Warrior Princess Mascara. This is a new find for me, but I really like it. All right, so for a long book, the only book that came to mind was Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. And that is a long freaking book. It took me an entire summer to get through. Granted, I was 15, so I could probably get through it a little faster now if I had like a dedicated couple days just to like get through it. But holy honking crap, that is a huge book. And I mean, to be fair, Victor Hugo was paid by the word. So Les Mis is a good book if you need just something really long and time consuming, like you were going on a 48 hour flight or something and you just want to consume a giant book. I mean, go for it. It's. <laughs> It's, it's, that one is one of those ones I'm like, I can see why people have trouble getting into this because it's just, it's just long. It, it's just long, <laughs> but good. It's, it's one of those ones that's long, but you can still see why it's a classic, you know? So real quickly, I'm going to conceal my under eyes and then I can hop back to the setting powder question. I'm gonna try out a new setting powder. This is the Hard Candy Marilyn Monroe Translucent Loose Powder with rosehip oil and strawberries. I say very strong scent for a setting powder. I was not expecting that strong of a scent. All right, setting powder. Pick your favorite last book in a series. I chose Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. And the reason I chose this book was because I feel like it's just, it's been so big and epic and long and dramatic and you've gone on this huge long journey with these characters. And then at the end of it all, I mean, you have, have some philosophy that's still going strong and everything. It's a very kind of philosophical, thoughtful ending. And not everything kind of ends the way you hoped because you're like, well, Frodo should have had his happy ending in the, the Shire. But then he's like, no, I'm going to go on this adventure and it's like oh okay you can see all of the thought that was put into making this very very well-rounded epic conclusion to a truly epic and classic series and i just i just love it so much it makes me so happy like every time i'm just like this this is a good solid ending i just again Classics are classic for a reason. It's just, it's, it's just, it's beautiful. It's perfect. I love it. Bronzer. Pick the perfect summer read. The only bronzer I've been using recently, because I'm just, I'm just too pale for anything else at the moment, is the Butter Bronzer in the shade Light. The perfect summer read. So the one I chose was Women of the Dunes by Sarah Main. This one isn't like, it's not a super well-known book, I don't think, but I, it makes me feel like summer because I, which is ironic because I actually got it in spring, but I got it last spring when I was traveling in the UK and it takes place, it takes place in Scotland. I don't, I don't remember where things take place anymore. Anyway, but it's just a beautiful, lovely summer read. It's got a little bit of mystery. It's got parallel timelines that just kind of pull together. It's just, it's a very quick read. So it's just kind of nice and relaxing. There's nothing too crazy going on. It's just like, it is what it is. It's a fun read. I really liked it. And again, that one had a pretty cover, which is, I judge books by their cover. I, I get things with pretty covers. <laughs> But I, I was legitimately interested in the synopsis. So it's just it's just a fun little summer read. I really enjoyed it. And I think you will too. Next. Contour. What book surprised you with how much stuff it had? Oh crap, I have to contour. Do I even know how to contour? What? 
Now I'll try and contour with that. This is the Bahama Mama bronzer. This is obviously a sample size. We will see what happens. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll just kind of draw the lines with this one. I'm surprised you with how much depth it had. Um, I would say The Storyteller by Jodi Picoult. That one, it just kind of took me by surprise because it follows kind of three, it, you could tell I kind of like my parallel storylines, but it did kind of follow these three different storylines. It kind of meshed historical with modern fiction. It had moral and ethical dilemmas. It dealed with um, the Holocaust and faith and, and forgiveness and it was just it was just very very deep and i'm pretty sure i cried this was this was a last summary but it was just so so unexpectedly good like i just got it on audiobook so i was like oh that sounds that sounds interesting and then it just turned into something so much more so much so that i bought the book i was like i have to have it because <laughs> i was like and again that's another one i will probably eventually do a book look on but it was just, it was very, very good. I feel like if I'm trying to contour, I should truly try and attempt to, like, actually contour and, like, try and get my nose. Whoop. Whoop. I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like that made my nose look crooked. Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? I'll, I'll put more powder on it to blend it out. Blush. Pick a book that had a cringe-worthy romance. I had trouble with this one because I couldn't think of a lot of books that had romances that I literally cringed at. So I ended up going with Cursed Child, which I don't even remember who the actual authors are because it's not J.K. Rowling even though her name's on the cover. By the way, um, Briar Rose Blush Palette. I did something that was cool toned but a little, little deeper, so. So the reason I chose Cursed Child was because, wasn't it? Isn't it like the daughter of like Voldemort and Bellatrix or something? Like, I don't even remember, but I just remember I was like, what the heck? Just, just what, what the heck? Like, just the idea of Bellatrix and Voldemort just conceiving a child makes me slightly want to vomit. So I, I, that, that will be my, that'll be my cringeworthy romance here. I'm, I'm not about that. Like, just, cursed child can go sit in a corner and just, just gather dust. <laughs> And hmm, we're we're not quite here for it. It's it's not. I, I own it because my brother gave it to me for Christmas present because he was like, I know you like Harry Potter, and I was like, oh, I own the book. <laughs> so I keep it because I love my brother. That's it. Highlight. Pick a book that brightens your day. I. Uh, this was another one I had trouble with, but what I ended up going with was Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine, which I have reread that book so, so many times, like probably literally at least 10 times because it, it's a very fast read, but it never ceases to brighten my day. I love it so much. It makes me so happy. Oh, and I'm going to be using the Ofra X Talia Mar Covent Garden highlighter. This is a new one, so I'm trying it out for the first time on my face, so this should be fun. It's so pretty. Anyway, so Ella Enchanted, it just brightens my day. I love it so much. Ella is such a good character. The story is so well developed. It is a fairy tale retelling, which is one of my favorites. Just there is nothing I don't love about that book. It just, it makes me happy. Again, that is another one I that I can almost guarantee you if I have children, they will be force fed that book. I will, I will make them love it. <laughs> I recognize you can't actually force children to love a book, but I will definitely like read it to them. Like it, it will, it will be part of my forever reading list. I feel like it's not as highlighty on my skin as it is in the like on my finger, but whatever. All right, pretty close to done, honestly. The last one is lipstick. I don't know what lipstick I want. Dang it. All of my non-stick lipsticks right now are in this container. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through this real quick. <laughs> All right, this is the Milani Color Statement Lip Liner in 09. Oh, that, that needs sharpened. Where did the, where did the sharpener go? I lip liner sharpened while I was waiting for my camera to cool, so. Eh. Okay. Um, so my favorite book, Kiss. I, again, this is another one that I had trouble with because I'm not, not a big romance person when it comes to my reading habits. So the only one I could think of was one I, one I read like way back when, and it's from Dragon Knight by Danita K. Paul. And it's the kiss between, obviously, two of the main characters. I'm not going to spoil it, I guess, because that's another one I eventually want to do in a book look series. So that used to be one of my, like, all-time favorites as far as, like, books. 
and I just, or not that series, I mean, I just, I just loved it. Eh, I'll go with this one. I'm going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hill Liquid Lipstick in Bittersweet. That doesn't bode well for a kiss. Ooh, that is darker than I thought. Holy crap. What the heck? That's <laughs> so dark. I, that? That looks so much darker on my lips than it does in the in the tube. Okay, so I have really dark lips now. That's chill. Anyway, so the cast in Dragon Knight. So the two main characters, um, or two of the main characters, kind of develop this begrudging relationship. And I just remember when I read the scene where they kissed for the first time, I was just, I just thought it was so stupid cute. And I was just so happy with it. I was like, yay, they finally got together. I was like, I literally remember being so, so happy because they'd been building it. And it wasn't quite enemies to lovers, but it was kind of like they had to, like they had a begrudging respect for each other and then they just slowly started to like each other over time and like found themselves to be more compatible as it went on and I just thought it was so cute. I'm just gonna say that's my favorite kiss because I just remember how utterly excited I was that they got together and then the rest of the series the relationship develops even further. It was just it just makes me very happy. So I need to reread that series again. This is the look. So I'm going to take this off. Perfect. Alright so my hair is still a little wet which what the heck, dude? Dry. But whatever. Who cares about wet hair? It's a, it's a look. It's a look. Right? Right? Wet hair. Whatever. Who cares? I don't own a hair dryer, so we're just gonna... This is the final look. I hope you enjoyed this books and makeup tag. I had so much fun with it. I really think it'd be fun to create like a part two of this and like come up with my own questions for each step. And I would put them in the order I actually do my makeup so I don't have to hop around. Oh, I was gonna put on setting spray. Because they had setting powder but not setting spray and I like setting spray. So this is the Foy Beauty Seal Deal Luminizing Setting Spray. I just don't like my hair like this. Hold on, we're, we're doing a ponytail. All right, we're back at a ponytail. Life is better. So this is it. If you liked what you see or you want to see more content from me, please consider subscribing. I upload once a week, usually on Saturdays. Please consider liking this video and commenting down below if you thought it was fun. Please let me know your answers to these questions or if you want to create your own books and makeup tag, feel free. Tag me in it. I'd literally love to see it. I want to see what, what other people do with this and the looks they create. I think this is so much fun right up my alley. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful rest of your day. Stay magic, keep reading, and I love you all so, so much. Goodbye!